car was a little bit lower, you would have had to be smaller first. Yeah. Okay, look at the depth. So how do we use impact craters to understand the ages of planets, the ages of the Earth, the ages of Mars? Well, craters like this one behind me are one of the indicators of how old a planet's surface is. The more of these, the more common they are, the older the planet's surface. And we use that as a way of counting the relative age of surfaces of planets. So on Mars, there are heavily cratered spots, lots of craters like this, and much bigger, and places where there's very few. Now, one of the other things we can do as we read the cratering record of planets is use the rocks that they excavate and the work they do on the planet to understand the bigger picture questions of a planet. Now, as I look down, I, I stumble upon a rock like this. It's a rock made of bits of other rocks pasted together from the sheer energy of the collision, the explosion that made craters like this next to me. And that energy allows other bits of rocks, perhaps different, perhaps telling their own stories, to be embedded in this. This brecciated rock tells a story of many pasts. The past of this piece that was embedded in this piece and how it got here. And that's the kind of story we need to learn to read as we understand the hidden, the beguiling record of the geology of Mars. Rocks like this from the craters on Mars, as here on Earth, give us insight into how that works. In fact, on Mars, we have a northern hemisphere that's smooth, like the area you see around me at scales of thousands of miles with few craters. And we have a southern hemisphere, a higher hemisphere, more relief, made by the same kind of rocks we think with many, many, many more craters. An older surface maybe, or maybe a surface that beguiles what happened. In fact, the largest cratering experiments in the solar system have taken place on planets like Mars and the Moon, maybe Venus, and early in the Earth history where the record is gone. Now come with me for a minute as we walk along this crater and imagine a crater not this size, but a thousand times bigger where the energy would be a billion times bigger. That amount of energy, a billion times that which made this crater. And this is equivalent to 100,000 tons of TNT to make a hole like this here on Earth. Imagine something now billions of times bigger. They can profoundly affect how the crusts of planets are assembled. Imagine this is Mars. In this container, I have flour, which will represent for us the subsurface of Mars. That's what we're looking to get to. And next, I'm going to place dust, in this case cocoa, on top to represent the cover soil, the cover rocks of Mars. And we're going to see, as I cover this now with the kind of stuff that's like the dust on Mars, what happens when we do a cratering experiment like those Mother Nature's done for us. I'm covering Mars now, I'm covering the white layer of the subsurface of Mars with the dust, which is cocoa here, and making a construction that I can do a cratering experiment on. Now, imagine this metal slug is a meteor about to collide with Mars 10 times faster than a speeding bullet. Now I'm going to demonstrate how that will work as a natural excavator of the Martian subsurface, the hidden side of Mars. Notice the crater that was made. You can see rays of bright ejecta. That bright stuff is the subsurface of Mars that's been excavated. And on the real Mars, that's what we're looking to get to with our Mars Exploration Rovers. We've blasted through the layer of covering material here, cocoa, to expose the white flower, which could be the under, underside of Mars, the hidden side, where we're looking for clues to the history of water, possibly to the building blocks of life. What a landscape. The ejecta blanket of a crater like those in thousands of places on Mars. Here I am exploring firsthand, the way the rovers will, and I come upon a giant breccia. 
the kind of thing that was unearthed here on the Sedan Crater. And it's like raisin pudding, rocks amidst rocks, cemented together by the energy of the impact. If we found rocks like this on Mars, we would have a field day. Um, this is even better than eating cake, let me tell you. Because this single piece of stuff, wrapped it up from hundreds of meters under the Earth, tells an amazing story, a story of limestones and water and cementation and excavation. We're looking for rocks like this with the Mars Exploration Rover. And here on Earth, we can learn how to read their pages. So as I walk here, I'm moving out into the ejecta blanket of this crater. And you might wonder what we'd expect to find. Well, one little clue to that is the very first stuff that's blasted out of a crater like this, whether it be on Earth and Mars, ends up out there. And we have found here at this test site examples, and I'm looking for one now, of the kinds of high-speed, early-time materials that were vaporized by the explosion and blasted at, at something like a mile a second out to the outer reaches of this big field of, of debris. Those kind of rocks tell us a lot about how deep the explosion penetrated. And on Mars, when a meteor from space collides with Mars, it burrows itself into the Martian surface and then explodes with tremendous energy, producing those kind of materials. So I'm now searching for one example of some of that kind of stuff. Here we have a piece of that special kind of stuff. It's light as a feather. Look at it. It's frothy. It's like pumice. This rock, at one point, was a solid rock that, you know, like the, all those you see around here. And then, because of this big explosion, and the similar explosions on Mars and other places, it was so shocked that it changed. It was metamorphosed, is the word we use. Notice this rock has preserved a little bit of its layering, but it's turned into a frothy, pumice-like rock that if I put it in my bathtub, would float. So these are the first materials blasted out of craters, like the Sedan Crater and like the little craters that pepper the Martian landscape. So that's what we can find. And it took 40, 50 years of research at places like this and other craters here on Earth to understand how to read the craters to tell us about how planets work. And while you may not know this, we have about 160, 170 well-preserved impact craters made by cosmic collisions here on Earth. And on Mars, we have millions of them. And on the Moon, countless millions. So we live in a cratering paradise out there in the, on the other planets. But here on Earth, we only have glimmers of the story. And that's why we come here, to places like the Nevada test site, to learn to calibrate our thinking on how craters work.